Good morning all. Uh, today we are actually continuing from what we had uh, done uh, uh, in the previous lecture that is we discuss about the breakdown of marginalism and the critique of marginalism based on different observations such as uh, Holland H. Uh, Gordon and other people. Uh, but uh, what actually uh, as a result uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, newer attempt uh, to basically revive the uh, new classical stream, uh, especially uh, the reason, especially in 1939 paper of Holland H, they were uh, basically left, uh, put a lot of criticism against it, but they, as we had concluded, that unable to uh, articulate as a general uh, theory or, uh, uh, you know, comprehensive theory of oligopoly uh, or oligopolistic behavior per se. So now, uh, uh, what Bain was actually doing, uh, especially uh, through in his paper in 1949, uh, he was trying to attempt that why firms are actually keeps a high price. So he was trying to basically uh, give some sort of a, an explanation in that sense. So John State Bain, uh, born in 1912 in Washington and died in 1991. Uh, formulated the his limit price theory in, a, in his article 1949 several years before his nice work on barriers to uh, entry in that sense and, uh, so in his early article he attempted to explain why firms over a long period of time were keeping their price at a level demand uh, level of demand where the elasticity is below uh, unity or inelastic in that sense so uh, the idea that is he was trying to moot or he uh, mooted was uh, is the following like being considered entry as the establishment of a new firm which built or introduced new productive capacity that was not used for production in the industry prior to the establishment of the new firm. Thus, for Bain, entry involves in the setting up of uh, a new firm and the addition in addition or the addition of a new capacity in the industry. So uh, that is actually a kind of a potent, potential uh, reduction possibly uh, inflict upon the firms and uh, therefore firms are actually not necessarily going to accept it in that sense. So uh, earlier we had seen that why it is kinky and now why uh, this price is actually going to uh, act as a key factor uh, to determine all kinds of you know economic activity in that sense. So uh, he had as some typical theorems is uh, followed in assumptions that there is a determinant uh, long run demand curve for industrial output or industry output which is unaffected by price adjustment of the seller or buyer entry. Hence the market marginal curve is determinate and the long run industrial demand curve shows the expected sales at different price maintained uh, over long periods. So this is one of his uh, most important assumptions in the sense and the effective collusion among the established oligopolis is another sort of uh, assumption which he made and then the firm sets a limit price based on uh, certain factors such as on the est estimation of the cost of the potential entrant then on the market elasticity of demand on the shape of the uh, level of LAC on the size of the market, on the number of firms in the industry and that. So, so um, he said that actually the oligopoly, the few firms, so they try to collude themselves in that sense to uh, form sort of a, 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 a create a barrier, a barrier in entry. So that barrier of entry came in the later work and above the limit price entry is at Tracted and there is a considerable uncertainty concerning the sale of the established firms seeks to maximize their long-run profit in that sense. Now, the concept of competition under this particular uh, framework is also is the following: like uh, being distinguished between two types of competition, actual competition, entry of the firms outside the industry, actual competition is probably of a high important uh, imp importance as a regular business activity especially in the oligopolistic market in that sense so existing firms act continuously under the feeling of interdependence with their actual competition 
so the firms are actually interdependent each other it is it doesn't mean that they can actually work according to uh, a monopoly kind of an uh, no it is not so though they are actually working independently but their act is basically uh, dependent however the threat of potential entry is also an important determinant for all the firms within that structure or a group because uh, you know if a new firm means it is actually reduces their uh, or total output in that sense. so maybe uh, being demanded so in that sense they are all having probably apprehension so that is the ideological idea so entry is also an important determinant of the price policy of firms there is a double form of recognized interdependence among established firms and potential entrants in that sense so a, a perfect competition model assumes that entry is free and easy in the long run equilibria uh, of uh, each uh, firm and of the industry is attached attained uh, at a P is equal to LAC is equal to LMC in that sense. So and costs are at minimum. So in a monopolistic market in the long run is that equilibrium is reached with the tangency solution that you what you call the P is equal to LAC and the P is greater than LMC but costs are not at a minimum in that context. So uh, but uh, uh, the margin by which established uh, firm can raise their price above the competitive price level persistently without attracting entry symbolically we have we you have a entry price that is pl minus pc by pc uh, that is where your e condition uh, the, the e is actually the condition of entry and the pw the limit price and pc is proper for competitive price in that sense so pl minus pc by pc is actually the kind of e solving for pw we find pl is equal to pc times one plus e in that sense so when you have this thing then you have a case uh, to evaluate the first case is actually no collusion case let us look into the details of it now if you look into the details of the collusion or collusion case uh, this would be exactly like this thing so you have a lac which is equal to mc1 and lac2 which is equal to mc2 so why because you have a p1 case and the p2 case normally it is supposed to be in the p2 case but what you do is actually you'll have a higher price therefore your pl is going to be very higher than the the perfect competitive price where uh, that is actually limits uh, with a higher price in that sense so you also constraints the quantity in that sense again uh, this is actually less than the price of the uh, monopoly in that sense so assume that the LAC uh, is L LAC is LAC one in the case two alternatives are possible either to change the PL or the change in monopoly price. That is the price uh, that corresponds to the intersection of LAC1, which is equal to MC1, with the MR in that. So, so this is also given in the graph. So uh, assume that the LAC is LAC2, which is equal to MC2. Uh, in this case, the price uh, that maximizes the profit, the PM2 in that. So, so this is actually PM2 case. Now, once you have this thing that the PM2 is lower than the PL, that is the first one in that sense. Now, uh, normally it is supposed to be in PM2, but PL is actually the case. So, uh, this is actually less than in that sense a PM case, that is the monopoly price of the commodity in that sense. So again, looking uh, the same in, the, in a detailed fashion of the revenue side, what you see is actually you have a D and you have an MR in that sense. Margin revenue is actually there. So you have a PL that is the limit price as well as you have a PM monopoly price. Again, if you have a uh, case, then what you do is depending on your elasticity, if your elasticity is 1, then you will be actually at PM uh, E is equal to 1 and B XMR. Whereas uh, if it is a PL case, then what happens is actually the uh, the the MR uh, B star case is actually what happens with. So uh, the clearly, if the limit price PL star and the MR is B star is negative, and hence the elasticity demand of the price PL is less than unity. Given that any entry preventing price PL is defined, the alternative open to the established firm in that so, so uh, to change a price equal to pl and prevent the entry 
a second to change the price below PL and prevent entry. This will be adopted if PM is greater than PL in that sense. So to change a price above PL and take the risk associated with the ensuring entry, entry and uh, the determinant uh, situation that arise in the post entry period, this course of action will be in any case adopted if you have a PL which is less than LAC in that sense. So apps, this is actually gives a kind of a absolute cost advantage that is arises from the following situation that is skills of the expert management personnel, patent and superior technique, central of supply of key raw material exclusive arrangement with suppliers, low, low cost capital for establishing the firm. Uh, to conclude, but still we have to actually uh, uh, talk about a little, but uh, let us first, uh, you know, articulate the con uh, the concluding points of what uh, Bain tried to make, that is Bain's contribution to the theory of firm is important, hence uh, his 1949 articles and 56 book contains the element of an interesting uh, theory of pricing. Uh, to prevent entry and this is also a kind of an oligopolistic understanding. The exposition is tedious uh, and uh, uh, Jack Streaker then uh, contains seminal ideas on the importance of potential entry in pricing decision and being uh, concentrated on entry by new firms but exist uh, exits uh, cross-entry takeovers, vertical integration and addition to capacity and existing firms etc. So first to see that the product differentiation and the scale economies may enhance the likelihood of entry in that sense. So now uh, we have also other problems with the uh, information uh, case with that of the uh, uh, limit price but uh, I'm not actually going to the details since uh, uh, this is already there so this slides will guide you to basically look into these three uh, different aspects of limit uh, price especially under the imperfect information case so uh, uh, this is what is actually the kind of things let me act now go to the uh, details of the uh, other aspect like uh, the pricing in the only property uh, okay uh, now uh, this is uh, uh, something to do with the entry conditions and right? entry may be blockaded effectively impeded or unaffected impeded so entry barriers are advantages held by incumbent firms arising from absolute cost advantage economies of scale product differentiation in that sense so uh, there comes the importance of the limit price that is the limit price is the highest price that can be charged without conduct conduce uh, con uh, conducing new entry can it be determined gain? Yeah, so this is what is actually I was referring to all this. In different textbook, you will find different uh, uh, graphical representation of the limit pricing. If the limit price is known, should incumbent firm set that price or not in that? This is an noble question in that sense. So limit pricing might mean less profit in short term, but less erosion of the profit in the long term. Therefore, uh, depends upon uh, the following thing like how much extra profit can be made in the short run by setting price above the limit price how long can that extra profit be enjoyed before entry take place what is the firm's discount rate etc so this is actually gives us another possibilities of different alternative theories which we will be discussing in the uh, next uh, lecture so that is a set of uh, 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 alternative theories uh, such as you know William Baumol's um, uh, theory of sales maximization or Williamson's theory or Maris model so all this is in a nutshell we will discuss because now uh, the, the, uh, the state is being set in that sense with this let me conclude today's lecture thank you so much for listening and uh, watching